AMD's generational improvements have been some of the best that we've ever seen in the history of man. Today I'm going to show you that it's even better than you originally thought. Good after morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I am Maurice of the Four Piece Variety or Wiki Triple XL. And in today's sponsored content review type thing, I'm going to be doing three videos about AMD and AMD CPUs. AMD approached me to do some content for them for their AMD CPU month, which is now in June. And this is the first of those videos. And what came to mind was Generational improvements, it's been something that we haven't really seen in the CPU game for quite a long time until really the birth of Ryzen. And I've owned an 1800X, a 2700X, which was in this machine, a 3950X, and I've used all of the new 5000 series processors. And then I was like, self, how well does a 5600X stack up against a 2700X? So I went into some of my older benchmarking stats and recordings that I had and had a look and they were almost a dead heat. But now, with the Giza improvements on the BIOS, things have gotten even better. So let's speak first about the test setup itself. I finally got to use my MB311. Now, it's been here for like four months. Hares, uh, Cooler Master, I'm very sorry about that one. Uh, I was very overdue to get a mid-size board, or an MATX board that could then fit inside of the chassis because an MATX only chassis. You might be looking at that GPU clearance over there at the bottom, but trust me, this uh, GPU doesn't need any help in the cooling department. And with those 120mm fans up front feeding air directly into the GPU's face or backside, I don't think it's going to have any problems and it really it didn't. Uh, it's been pretty cold over here in South Africa as well. It is winter time. So. Plus there is an extraction fan around the back. I just threw in one of these spare master fans that I had which is actually for the Hyper 212 cooler. I just happened to have a spare of those lying around so I put in some extraction. Now I've purposefully used the Wraith Spire Prism LGB, the cooler that actually came with the 2700X when I first bought it. Just It's a little bit older and dusty in the close-ups there but it still works absolutely fine and still works on the newer clips and motherboards. They've actually been making the same setup and clips since M3+. Plus. The RAM is the Clev 3200MHz CL16 Crash X, which I've tested numerous times and worked with before on Intel and on all sorts of platforms. And once again, compatibility was plug and play. Set the DOCP profile and that's that. And all of that is then pulled together by the MSI B450 motherboard. It's a very normal Dash M2. It doesn't even have heatsink cooling on the VRMs and the power delivery. It's just on the borderline of power delivery for the 2700X but enough that it can then power a 120 watt TDP processor. Absolutely no problems. The 5600X is much easier to keep powered at a whole 65 watts of expectation. I'm using the Hikvision E2000 2TMB NVMe once again, so everything is basically straight from my test bench. Powered by 850 watt power supply as well, the Antec HCG 80 plus gold is more, more than enough for the system. Now, critically, I have not done anything in the BIOS. I have not mended or changed anything. I did not use the Dragon Center software to enhance the performance. What I wanted to test was baseline like for like, plug and play like for like, throw in the 3200 MHz CL16, leave the GPU stock, leave everything as stock as possible so that we get a proper like for like comparison. The only thing that's ever been changed here is the processors. But just to keep that in mind, before we jump over, to the benchmark talk. Alrighty, so benchmarks, let's go through them. We're gonna start off with Cinebench R15. So as you can see, the 5600X with six cores and 12 threads beats the 2700X with eight cores and 16 threads. This is how much generational improvement I've gotten, how much RPC gain I've gotten, that's instructions per clock, and how much better their caching systems are. To the point that with 25% less cores, it's actually faster than Cinebench R15. And if we move forward now to Cinebench R20, you'll see more of the same. This time though, the gap got even wider, and this is with a heavier AVX instruction set. Cinebench R20 has a much heavier instruction set than Cinebench R15 had. I found out this the hard way with some temperature testing and stuff that I was doing, and well, 
these results just even speak even more into that. Don't forget while we go through this, the 5600X is a 65 watt TDP chip and the 2700X is a 120 watt TDP chip. So it's using twice the power to deliver less performance. Moving further on, we are going to have a look at CPU mark and go through a couple of things here. I mean, the combined score over tall, <laughs> over tall, overall, it's 27% better, okay? And that's exemplified through things like single thread improvement, 33% better in two generations. Physics score improved by 70%. So it's its ability to handle multiple tasks and stuff in gaming and with that, and you'll see that later with combined scores as well in stuff like Fire Strike and Time Spy. It's going to be more of the same. Inst extended Instructions SSE, which we use for gaming and that sort of stuff, 66% performance improvement with eight less, with four less threads and two less cores absolutely staggering and it just continues on as we go forward you'll see a csgo ultra i mean this was just hilarious look at this performance difference 329 fps to 498 this is with the exact same gpu ram everything exact same setup the best part is if you've got a b450 and you had a second gen you could literally just upgrade and if you're worried about losing those two cores as well I don't see anything to worry about here. Now, I really like this Metro Exodus test because it's a very GPU dependent test. This is to show you the difference between a CPU based game like CSGO and a GPU based game like Metro Exodus. We, you, if you're going to have RTX and pretty much whatever GPU you use, as long as your processor is newer than the last three, four years, then the scores should look pretty similar to this. But now we come to 3D Mark Firestrike, all right? And this is just flexing so hard over here, okay? Physics score went up 18%. With less cores, it ran faster. The combined score also improved 3%. This is with the exact same GPU. Even the even the overall, well, the overall obviously would increase, but the FPS was very similar, except for this CPU test once again. And this is where that caching system comes in with that combined test improvement. Yes, it's only 3%, but it is improvement. And that comes down to how they've unified those CCXs and how that caching system has improved. And now if we move over to Time Spa, you'll notice that with these tests, there was a more what of what you would expect. That's because this relies on core count more so than anything else in this time spot test. But with 25% more cores, it dropped 3%, a whole 3% <laughs> in the test. That's absolutely staggeringly good for a thing. It's, it, it, what are, I, I'm just going to keep coming back to it, guys. Two cores, four threads less. And this is the sort of performance that we're getting from this 5600X now. And if we go, I mean, further on still back to um, multi, all of these tests, if I, if I just bring up the CS again, like, I think I'd like to leave it here. Just just leave that on your screen for a moment. 51%. 51% faster. I think I've made my point. Back to the studio. So as you can see from the benchmarks that I did, six cores basically now equals eight cores that's how much advancement they got generation on generation and they did that within a two-year period i don't know if you guys know but to even bake and deliver the dyes and everything that you need and all of the uv treatments and all of that sort of stuff they go onto the wafer that the cpu is then manufactured on takes literally 10 months and they did this in like a two-year period with how I, I don't even know what's going on at AMD, but all I can say is I'm very much behind it, especially when you're getting literally like 50% plus single core performance in games. Absolutely mind blowing. I just love AMD at the moment. They've, uh, they're doing a good job. They're doing good work over there. Auntie Lisa, I salute you. Anywho, that is all I have for you today in this review. I will be doing two more coming up in the future. One's going to be 3950X versus 5950X, and I'm going to do a piece on Ryzen and RAM to show you how important it is to have the right dual channel setup on your Ryzen products. Until then, check out amd.com for more, and I will see you on the flip side.
and stand up into the table. Victory!